Good evening, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee meeting of Tuesday evening, May 21st, 2019. I'd like to have Mary Louise Woolsey lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to start on the other side. This uh, month, starting to my far right with Mr. LeBranch, we introduce yourself as members of the uh, Budget Committee. Uh, Stephen LeBranch. Joyce Scapertis. Bob Ladd, Village District Representative. Mike Bluff. Brian Warburton. Steve Henderson. Rusty Bridal, Selectman's Rep. Ginny Bridal Russell, our School Board Representative. And we have our Administrative Assistant, Barbara Kravitz. Thank you again, Barbara, for the great job you're doing. Um, we'll lead into the first item on the agenda is review and approval of our minutes for April 16th. Those were all posted and, and due notice, and they're all online under the documents section of the Town of Hampton website. You all should have had time to review them. Uh, page one, any changes? Page two. Page three, Mr. Hen uh, Mr. LeBranch. You know, Barbara does an excellent job, but I know that she puts a little something in there each time just to see if anybody's reading yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I know she does it on purpose. Anyway, at the bottom of the page, yeah. at the page, page three, yeah. the very last word uh, it says was told by the BRA. We I had believe that. that's supposed to be BOA. No. No. D R A. D R A. Oh, D -R -A. Oh, yeah. I thought it was you know, board, whatever. D R A. D R A. Okay, so I okay. move to correct the correction. There we go. <laughs> D R A. Thank yeah, you very much. <laughs> Any other uh, corrections on page three? Page four. Page five. Page four. Back to page DRA four. DRA again down. Yeah, DRA, yep. Again? Towards, towards the bottom. Paragraph that starts with the, the second line. Yeah, Mr. Second Pluff line. recalled that all the hearing on the night the vote that had to occur, the BUDCOM uh, would not have a positive vote for the budget information from the DRA, it DRA. should be. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Anybody have anything on page five? And page six. Okay, motion to approve the minutes. So moved. moved by Mr. Pluff. Do Second. I have a second? Seconded by Mr. Henderson. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Did want to make an announcement before we move right into the agenda, and he's going to he's going to be calling me up saying, "Why are you doing this?" But David Mara is not here tonight. He got recused from the meeting. He and his wife are in Europe celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, good for them. And uh, he's a great guy and Terry's wonderful and great family. He's uh, he's enjoying himself, I'm sure. So we miss you, Dave. We'll see you next month. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to give a little the next item on the agenda is the New Hampshire Municipal Association update. Uh, I'm first going to refer to Mr. Bridal to give us uh, like a couple sentence update on how this all came about <coughs> since uh, the vote of the Board of Selectmen, I think a couple of weeks ago. That well, you asked me to bring it back to him. I did, and the board allowed you to do it. Simple right. enough. Right. Well, but they, you did more than that, though. They not only gave the chair and vice chair, any member of the budget committee or yep. any member of the selectmen yep. can now call NHMA individually. Um, I did want to say that about. Two days after that vote, I had a nice chat with Mr. Buckley, and at the time, he had not got Mr. Welch's letter stating that all the members could call, so I'll make sure that that, that is uh, good. But I had a great conversation, and you all should be in receipt of an email that I forward to you, to you on May 14th uh, from Mr. Buckley. Um, and the challenge we have before us tonight is the discussion reverting back to tie votes. So traditionally for the viewers at home, it's always been the, the tradition that 
anything time is a tie vote, which happens, it has gone on the ballot as not recommended. So going back to last November, Chairman Jones at the time had a conversation with the Department of Revenue Administration. As you remember, we agreed as a committee to put it off until the new year <coughs> took place in the new year with everything going on. DRA almost has the same but a little opposite view than HMA. DRA said, technically, you can do it any way you want. You can leave it blank or you can choose to vote your own process and procedure and do not recommend it. Mr. Buckley had a little different view. What he says in writing was pretty much what we talked about, although he was kind of asking out loud too, saying, you know, really, I mean, if you guys want to do it. I mean, he's, he recommends that we just leave it, you know, do nothing like we did last fall, meaning it was blank. Um, you know, in his last statement, that approach would mistake the actual outcome of the tie vote, which is to take no position on the pending motion to either recommend or not recommend the appropriation. As he said to me, he says, you know, Brian, it, it failed. I mean, it, it's just there's, there's no vote that was actually taken because it goes into fail voting. He, he recommended that we have majority either way, much like we did on the budget. The problem with that is I explained to him, if we get tie votes in January, December, we're not, we're at crunch time. You know, we don't know how many members are going to be here. I don't think it was as big as issue when we had 15 members because we even have had three or four missing. You always had the majority. So what I'm asking my fellow members tonight is, and, you know, it's a great conversation with, the Buck, with Mr. Buckley. It's taken many years to get us back to this place, which I'm thrilled. Matter of fact, when I called up, Mrs. Woolsey would appreciate this and Mrs. Brado Russell, I asked if Judy Silva was still around. <laughs> and they said, oh, no, she retired years ago. And they go, you know, Judy? I said, let me see, 1995, I think I spoke with Judy. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to ask everybody's opinion on this. So we put this to bed on how we want to deal with tie votes <coughs> uh, as they come up this year. Mr. LeBranch? I read the um, email that you forwarded from Mr. Buckley. And I, I thought I printed it out, but I can't find it among the papers here. It seems to me that he cited um, some case law. Mm -hmm. And so and, and I, the message I got from that was that if it's a tie vote, it, not, it doesn't say not recommended. That's right. Okay, That's what I picked up from it. So I'm very willing to go along with what the lawyer said, since I'm not a lawyer. So I just agree with what he said. We just, if it's a tie vote, it doesn't say not recommended. It doesn't say recommended. It doesn't say. Yeah. Let me, for the viewers at home, and uh, thank you, Mr. LeBranch, in, in the conversation that I had and in writing, Mr. Buckley refers to, although RSA 32 colon 5, Roman numeral f uh, 5, requires the Budget Committee to provide its recommendation on all separate warrant articles, and a tie vote is not a recommendation, the failure to make a recommendation does not, quote, not affect the legal validity of any appropriation otherwise lawfully made. So to your point, that's what you're saying. So yeah. just so that everybody understands at home on that. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Brian. Mrs. Capri Ms. Capernas. Ms. Capernas, thank you. Um, I, too, agree with Mr. Buckley, and I believe it should be left blank. I feel that in not if we were to post not recommended, it would... Um, it would imply to the voters that we did not reach a tie vote. So I believe it should be blank. Okay. Mr. Ladd. I totally agree with the previous two speakers. Having one, been the one who asked you to refer to the NHMA for their opinion, I certainly agree with the conclusion they reached. Mr. Pluff. <coughs> you made an opinion, and I guess we could go with it if, if we wanted to. Or do something different, but it looks like everybody agrees with it. Mr. Henderson. Yeah, I would actually uh, go <coughs> to review what Mr. Buckley had to say. I would agree with the past speakers and what they have said. And then we just hope that, uh, you know, we have nine. Yeah, right. And we don't have any, uh, you know, yeah. not recommend or seven, and we don't have uh, that issue come up. But if it does, then I would go with what Mr. Buckley has said, if that's his recommendation. Right. He's the attorney. This is something that I'm sure he's dealt with over the years, so. I would go with his recommendation. Mr. Bryant? I, I agree. He's, ma he's made a decision, a, a determination, and it's a, I believe it's the same determination that the town's attorney made, and uh, that's why we did it last year, and I think we should go with it. Mrs. Bryant Russell? I agree. <laughs> okay, just for the record, I want to have a vote on this, and I think it's going to be unanimous, but I want to, so that everybody understands that going forward, if we have tie votes, 
<clears throat> it will go on as blank as we did last fall. So do I have a motion? I have a motion to leave the it blank. Like we I'll did second it. Sec moved by Mrs. Caperta, seconded by Mr. Henderson to leave <coughs> any tie votes as blank on the warrant. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. That worked out very well. Okay, the old old business. <clears throat> Let me also reiterate to you um, what I've said before, and I'm going to continue to say this based on my history of being on boards. We're here to work, and we're going to work hard this year. And we're, we are expected to come to this table knowing what is on the agenda and understanding what is on the agenda. We have a website at our disposal. You can go on at 11 at night, at 10 in the morning, after church on Sundays, after an event. So when I put down review February and March financials, and we also <coughs> just got from Christy yesterday, uh, or was it last Friday, the, the April financials, I hope you've all had a, had a chance to look at them. Um, I, have, I'm, I have my own thoughts about what I'm seeing in these, but I'd like to start around because there are some things that stand out that we, we're going to be addressing uh, shortly. And I wanted to get people's thoughts, um, Mr. LeBranch, on the financials up to date through April 30th. You know, Brian, I, I received this agenda. I went online because Christy just sent us the financials. It might have been Monday night. No, for, what's tonight? For, for April. April. For April, right. That yeah. was last night, I think. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And I didn't print out all 30 pages, but mm -hmm. I did print the first two pages, which is the summary. summary right. And of course, being in a rush and having another meeting today earlier, I forgot to bring them with me. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm just going to have to, at this time, pass. Yeah, and, and remember, February and March is what's on here that we were going to discuss. April <coughs> fairness is going to be on the next agenda, but uh, the next month's. Oh, okay. I, I printed last night's and thinking that, you know, those are the most recent ones. But, yeah. you know, in my rush to get here and do everything else that I did today, I, I forgot to bring them. So okay. I'm going to have to pass on this yeah. first one, this first round. Ms. Capertis. Um, I What I'd like to do is go on record for thanking Christy for meeting with me last Thursday um, to review both providing me with a book and providing me with the bylaws and understanding the role and some of the history. Um, and in terms of the in, in terms of the information for both February and March, I think I would just comment on the fact that um, it would be my hope that we could come to an agreement on a budget for 2000 for uh, for the coming year, um, because the default budget, as I see, um, as I see discrepancies um, from one year to the next, I think that there are ways that we could be um, that we could be effective as a board uh, for those line items that we um, that we can adjust. You know, as far as um, collective bargaining agreements and other things that are beyond our control, I think that um, I think that we could um, I think we can be more effective going forward. Okay, Mr. Ladd, I'm not sure one or two months is enough data to yeah. interpret as a trend. <coughs> if you things can happen in any one month that distort the numbers. I would be more interested in a discussion along the lines of how much revenue is available yeah. beyond the requirements of the default budget so you have kind of a baseline to work from, which would be improved tax revenue would equal the sum of money that could be spent above a default budget without <coughs> impacting the tax rate. Uh, something along those lines and something else we discussed last month, which was basically some idea of what would be lost if the uh, recommended budget failed. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. Mr. Pluff, uh, we're only three or four months into uh, the budget. It's, it's some things are front-loaded and they show up as overspent right off, and then as the year goes on, the drawer on those accounts is less because they're paid up front, and things tend to balance out. I think, you know, six or seven or eight months into the year, you get a 
you get a better idea of where you are. Uh, the first two or three months are, are very difficult. They're, they're weather related. You, you've gone back to January. You didn't approve the budget until the middle of March. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're spending money that, that you really don't have until the middle of March. And then, and then you've got to catch up. <laughs> you know, it, it takes time to get that all balanced mm -hmm. out before you really find out what's a going ahead and what's going backwards. It, it, it takes t you can't yeah. just say it's X number of dollars every month because seasons affect it and, and the way that the system is set up, there are things that come early in the year, things that come late in the year. Big, big population in the summer, big bills in the summer, but they balance out by the time you get seven or eight months into the year. You, you have a much better idea where you are. It's just very difficult to figure out the first three or four months that you have really nothing other than some is overspent and some is underspent. That's it. Mr. Henderson? Yeah, I would agree with uh, all the panels so far and with what they have uh, said. I mean, we're just starting off on it. We haven't got into the busy season. I mean, for the police, we got a busy season coming up. We don't know where that's going to go. You don't know how busy it's going to be, you know, weather-related. Fires, uh, you know, look at the fire department, how many calls they're going to have, is it going to get, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, extracurricular things that come up and exigent circumstances, fatals, car accidents, God knows what can come up that, you know, can add on more time. Uh, so I don't really have a good feel yet for it. Um, I do feel that uh, I, I've been getting a lot of calls about, I'm going to throw it out there, and it's nothing against the selectmen, but I get a lot of people making comments about the dump, uh, you know, on the Sunday hours and things. Yeah. I get that every day. They're like, you can't find the money in the budget. And I guess I'll go back to something about 10 years ago, maybe a little longer. Uh, when Mr. Barrington came up to me one day and he said it to the town, uh, if we have a default budget this year, you know, we're in, we're in serious trouble. You know, the rec department's closing, the fields aren't going to be able to be used because we don't have insurance, firefighters getting laid off, police are getting laid off. It was because it was just a really big thing, you know? And, the, and then the dump was going to be closed on Saturdays and Sundays, and when it was all said and done, I, you know, they, the budget went down that year. And then what happened? The public got everything they wanted and more when they complained about the dump hours and everything else. So what I'm saying is, is uh, you know, we got to really look at this budget, um, you know, and see, like Joyce said, you know, let's see, uh, you know, if we have a default budget, it'd be nice to be able to say, okay, if we have a default budget, this is truly going to happen. Okay, we can't make a buff, we can't say this, you know, this to the public, and then all of a sudden they get everything they got the year before and they got a default budget. We have to make it clear to the public that if you have a default budget, this is where we're going to lose, you know. And like I've said before, the people in this town, the taxpayers, they've always been really good about taking care of the town employees and taking care of the town and taking care of the equipment. And I think people in this town, um, you know, they really, uh, they get a good bang for their buck. But as I said in the last meeting, we got a lot of infrastructure work coming up. We get a lot of problems with the water treatment plant, the sewer projects, roads in this town. You drive down many roads. I mean, so we get a lot of issues that come up, and we got to start planning on on all these big projects and where the money's going to come from. So I'll leave it at that for now. Mr. Bridle. Yeah, I I don't have the previous budgets with me or the reports, but I do have her one for for the for the April one. April, yeah. And. Uh, you know, some of the things I'm, I'll, I'll just bring up is, um, you know, she looked in April of 2018, they were under budget by $727,000. In April of 17, they were under budget by 504. And this year, we're at 697, or 2.77% under budget. Yeah. And now you look at that number at 697, that's a lot of money. But when you take she compared it to a, a, a household budget at $5,500 for the year. Right. For, you're under budget by $152. So people see that big number, but actually, if, you, if you're talking about your household budget, it's only $152. So you you got to be careful when you see figures like that. And like, like Mr. Pluff said, a lot of stuff, uh, one-time charges, whether it be insurances or... <coughs> so they, you'll see some of those lines in those budget that are 50, 60, 70 percent 80 percent expended mm -hmm. but that's because the payments came first and that there won't be anything else spent under that so as you go further and further along 
but right now she's uh, you know the, the target for the fourth month is 33 percent and we're at 30 percent so uh, I know January uh, February January February March we had uh, you did have a lot of expenses fortunately we were we had a, a mild winter as far as snow plowing and stuff went like that so you're gonna see some savings there uh, and and to mr. Henderson's fact of of, of the, the, the dump being closed. I've, I've received a number of calls on that. What people have to realize is, and they said, well, why can't we do a different week, a different day of the week? <laughs> One, it goes to contracts, contracts and what they say. But two, Saturdays and Sundays are 100% overtime. Right. And so if, if you can't take it off on a, on a uh, Wednesday or a Thursday because that's their scheduled work week. So you're not going to save anything by closing the landfill where you're going to save it is if you close it. And they looked at the numbers. Their numbers said uh, they got the most people coming in before noontime. And so that's why they decided to go with that. But we had some talk of closing, alternating, one weekend Saturdays, one weekend Sundays. Figured maybe we could do something like that. But it just, this was the least impact for the, for the voters and, and the residents of Hampton. So I think that's why they, they, they closed the dump like that. Mrs. Bridal Russell? I think that Steve Henderson's on the mark is we do have to say what's going to happen in the default budget because I've lived through many budgets that the sky was falling and the sky indeed stayed up. Um, so I think we need to really be careful of what we plan for a budget and also to be honest enough to say this will go out and for the selectmen to have the courage and convictions to make, you know, to make sure that, that we don't have the money for that. I think we need to have an honest discussion with everyone. Mr. Chair, could I speak? Are you done, Jenny? Yeah. Could I speak now because I kind of passed on the first round? We'll give you three minutes. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you know, I don't think that um, you have, when you say the words default budget, I don't think it has to be uh, associated as something negative. No. The right. difference between the default budget and the proposed budget was how much money? I don't remember now. Do you remember? It was $500,000 $500, in a $26 million yeah. budget, okay? Right. It's a small amount of money, okay? Now, I remember what you're talking about 10 years ago and the first thing that they were going to stop doing. Well, we're not going to have any school crossing guards. <laughs> okay, remember? I that do. was the first thing. <laughs> I do. I mean, we're going to get you right where you live. Yeah. And so, you know what? It's a small five hundred thousand dollars as you pointed out small amount of money it's very small do the math the percentage yeah, it was and yeah, yeah if it, even if it was five hundred, just to round a number yeah. off it's not the sky's not falling right yeah. because yeah. that budget is still 26 million something right. and so it's not as if we halved it you know so every nobody's going to be uh, you know the sky's not actually falling at all so i think we have to establish that Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chair. you. Um, I listen very carefully, and I hate to say I'm going to disagree with most people here, but I'm going to remind everybody what you just said. We've heard it's too early to look at two or three months of data, and Mr. LaBranch is absolutely on the page that I'm going to be on in a second. It's too early to look at two or three months of data, but then again, Mr. Bridal told us that last night we're talking about how we're under budget this month, under budget that month. Let's start confusing the public starting tonight. The bottom line is this. Four years ago at this board, everybody was crying as Public Works had spent $240,000 in January and February on snow. And they asked the Budget Committee, through the selectmen, to have a, uh, an opinion from the state so that they could grab some money from the undesignated fund balance because they were going to be low. And you know what they told them? Absolutely. And you were here. They told them no, because so your budget just started. Miss LeBranch is on the track that I'm on, where there's enough money. Let's stop this stuff about the fall budget. And let me tell you another thing. When you have a budget for the town, and I sat on that board, you don't sit here on April 1st and say, let's just throw the taxpayers a hammer because they didn't vote for our budget. Why don't you wait to December, November, like we used to? Okay, we're seeing we're going to be 80,000 short, so we're going to close the transfer station. We'll do this. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know which people you talked to, but we didn't, this budget did not pass last year in a big way because we were effective, Ms. Skippers. And I don't know where your comment is about we need to be more effective. 
This board, more years than ever, asked questions. We asked questions of the superintendent who didn't like it because she was never asked questions. And if you remember, at the public hearing, we changed the vote of the school. We had not voted to recommend. We changed it, and it just barely passed. And I, I present to all of you tonight that this committee is well-respected, and that school budget would not have passed if we didn't change our vote at the last second. As far as the default budget goes, the, the people that pay the taxes in this town are sick of hearing about we have no money. The unaudited end of year 2018 for the town is $300,000 or a little less that we had. So, Stephen, as usual, you're on the, you deal with this stuff. But we've got to start the message in these meetings going forward is that do we want to pass a budget? Yeah, it would be nice to. But it's more than just what we're going to give up because as Mrs. Brown Russell and Mrs. Woolsey could tell you, you don't know who the next Board of Selectmen is going to be. So why would anybody sit here and say, oh, if we get a default budget in March, we don't know if the two members are going to be there in March. It could be a whole new board that's going to change the decisions. We, we've got to be very clear in how we're presenting this. The only other thing I'll add is I put the February and March financials just like the selectmen have on it, just like the school board has on it, just like the B, uh, village district. It's not that we need long discussions, but we need to understand that so that when we come back at, in the November time frame when we're discussing budgets, we're able to look at it. And the only other thing I get concerned about why we're doing a lot of this information early on, I saw it happen last year. My attendance has been exemplary in 35 years in this town. I am appalled at the Selectman's Board and at this board for people missing meetings. Yes. I, and I've never in my life, I watch the Selectman, I tell my wife, I pull my hairs out. There has <laughs> never been a full week, I think once in the last, and so you say that, that let's wait to November, what happens if we have four budget committee members and all of a sudden they come in in January because somebody calls them and say, oh, we need your vote to make sure it passes, and they could care less about what the figures are. Well, that's true. <laughs> and that's what I'm not gonna deal with this year. We are gonna have discussions we're not going to just slough it off. Um, and, and as far as the transfer station goes, as I said before, you know, Public Works did what they were told to do. I understand Director Jacobs and Deputy Director Hale. They were told what they needed to do. But I'm going to tell you something, uh, and you can follow me around town. People are just sick of it because, if anything, and you want to talk about customer service, this is the busiest time for people after winters. And we're going to say to the people, the heck with you, we're closing, you know, I have people and relatives of mine live in this town that work Saturdays. They are livid. They, they are livid. And you know what? You know what they said to me, Brian? I'm not going to complain. What good is it going to do? They're just going to have to work it out. So let's not think that the echo out there is light. And Mr. Henderson's point is well taken. We have got to do our homework. I want to support budgets. But I, I think the message I know was sent through the SAU 90, very strong. They got the message, I hope, with new positions. Um, you know, and this is the other thing that's happened in this town about the last seven years. People are going to hear about the thousands of dollars that we have hired in positions. And we're going to talk a little bit more on the school end, but the same with the town. We cannot, we cannot say that we're going to pick up trash seven days a week on Hampton Beach, but we're going to close the transfer station on Sundays for our residents. That's the feedback I get. And if you guys aren't getting that feedback, there's something wrong. But I needed to say that because this is a great committee, and we worked hard last year. Believe me, people hated coming before us because they didn't want to be, they didn't want questions asked. Well, down it, they're going to get a mask. We're not a, st a rubber stamp board, and we're going to ask the same questions this year. Do you have a comment? I thought you had a comment. No, I have a comment. Go ahead. Okay. The yeah. comment is it wasn't the questions that were asked. It was the manner in which they were treated. If people are treated with respect, they don't mind answering any questions at all. But when people are treated rudely, Brian, you know as well as I know that people aren't as willing to come forward and to talk. So I don't think it was the questions that bothered people. I think it was the meetings and the way in which the qu they were addressed. I, I sent you an email, and now that you brought this up, unfortunately, I'm going to bring it up. Yep. So you want to go down that road. Your board violated 91A. How did we I, violate 91A? Did you watch the December 11th meeting? The December. You weren't here because you. I wasn't here. Mr. DeLuca was here. Mr. DeLuca. Mr. DeLuca was admitted here, bringing yes. something of a matter of my family into your non-public session Please. and go. So wait a minute, Jenny. <clears throat> don't go down that road. All these members Mr. were here. Mr. And DeLuca I said what? 
Well, you asked <laughs> Mr. Lou, watch the replay of December 11th. Okay. He violated 91A, and your chairman did too. You need to watch the replay. That's so Mr. don't tell it. To clarify. Right. Mr. Mr. Shepard, Shepard and, and Mr. DeLuca. DeLuca. Okay. But the point I'm saying, you keep saying how you they weren't treated right. I sat where you sat last year. Mr. Jones, I have to say, ran a great meeting. This I'm so tired of hear about the treatment. Mr. Jones ran asked some great questions. He did a great job. So And I say again, it's not the question. It's the manner right It's in always we go back to that. Right, go ahead. And it is. It's true, Brian. Oh. And it's been that way for 30 years, 40 years. I don't know how long we've been here. You know, we've been here since time began, some of us, you know. And, and the thing of it is, if you don't, if you don't treat people with respect. I, I, and that goes both ways. It yeah. does yep. go both ways. Yep. But we have to be careful. We can ask any question we want as long as we treat them right and listen to the answer. Yeah. Well, I was here for all the meetings, and I didn't see anything out of order. Mr. Henderson. Yeah, um... I guess it's like this. We're getting a little bit off track of what we're here to do as far as the budget goes. I mean, we could get into this and say, okay, I've seen disrespect beyond, beyond I didn't bring it up. selecting meetings. I've seen a little bit in this and that. And there's no question, like I said in the first meeting, you know what? We might not all disagree with each other. We might disagree, might agree. But at the end of the day, we're a committee. we got to look professional. we got to do our job. And if, uh, you know, people, and I have to agree, Brian, on one thing there, we're I could see last year for the first time in, in a while, people were asking some big questions, okay? And sometimes when you ask big questions, the other side doesn't like that. Well, unfortunately, we're at, at a point where we have a $26 million budget. We have a you know $26 million school, beautiful school being built, well needed. We got a lot of good stuff going on in this town. But at some point, you know, we also have to, you know, like I said, we got we to gotta be respectful amongst each other. We've got to be professional. And if... Uh, you know, everybody brings in a, a good budget. We be professional amongst each other. That's the way we've got to be. You know? But this I will tell you, I'm going to say this, and, I, and you can quote me or they can look. If the share, shenanigans that happen on behalf of the school administration bringing in a group that went after this committee, I will adjourn the meeting in two minutes. It ain't going to happen this year. But that was awful what went on last year when they came after us. And that's just, I'm going to end it by saying that. Um, selectman's report, 2018 end of year surplus. I think I alluded to that already. Um, we asked for three-year budget comparisons. Um, is, how are we making out on that? Is it budget averages? Is a copy for everybody and also a copy for the uh, Okay, so that will secretary. be the first on the agenda for June. Yeah. 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 And then... Uh, yeah. The final surplus was the second one. Thank you. Unaudited was 300000 yes. according to Christie, and then audited was, what, two hundred and eighty. Thank you. According to what she sent me. Here is what she's given me for the unaudited right here. What page? I just gave it. It's, just, it's right coming right. right. Oh, it's coming. Right. 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 Mr. Chair, just to be sure, so this first package we just have, is going to be our homework homework uh, assignment uh, yes. for next month. Oh yes, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> has to be. Yeah, we wouldn't have time. We just got it today. Yes. So. Okay, thanks. Uh, as I explained in email sent to the committee, the auditors are still in the process of completing the audit, and therefore the exact figures are not yet available. However, the committee may wish to. Okay, the document shows a combination of revenue and expenses and reflects the 2018 net change to unassigned fund balance projected at. 237,814. My, my good friend, Mr. LeBranch, remember his comments, there's plenty of money everywhere. If the committee is only interested in budget <laughs> expenditures, the unaudited figure shows that we ended 2018 under budget, by under budget, by 304,000. So boy, that's really cutting it close. I do not want to reiterate that these figures are only estimates at this time as we are still in the audit process and waiting for the final figures. So the, the moral of the story is, you know, let's not feel bad for the town. There's plenty of money. There's plenty of money everywhere. Well, so, Mr. Chairman, go ahead. can I ask a question? Go ahead. Um, for the $304,000 that's under budget, is that a percentage over the total budget? Yeah, that's what they ended up with. Right. <coughs> so if our total budget is $26 million, mm -hmm. the $304,000 is 1%. Right. Then so why can't if, we open the transfer station, save seven thousand? So well, I I don't know because I wasn't here for the transfer <laughs> okay. station That's what conversation, we're I, which is un, I, I I understand, but from um, 
what I think what we're talking about is a is a surplus of three hundred thousand, right. which is one percent. And I think if all of us are running our own home, in our own checkbook, having a one percent surplus in our checkbook, isn't doesn't feel great. So I'm just saying. So three hundred thousand in absolute dollars is a lot of money. But 1% on a 26 million dollar budget is not that much. Mr. Chair, go ahead. I think it's dangerous to, to make a comparison um, of household budgets and government budgets. I think that's always a little bit dangerous and it simplifies things a little bit too much. Um, but having said that, Having worked for corporate for many years, having been in management position, revenue, uh, a revenue generating department, a one, having 1%, one if you can get within 3%, 1%, that's good budgeting. Yes. That's good management. I've got to Agreed. tell you right now, that is excellent, excellent. To, to come shave it that close, that's very, very good. Congratulations. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. And, and, and just to that fact, as I said earlier, we were very fortunate. We had a mild winter. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a lot of fires. Mm -hmm. Police calls were down. So 1% can get eaten up real quick. And we have to look at that going forward, too. We don't know. There's no crystal ball that says there's going to be no hurricanes or whatever when we have here. Yeah. So flood, there you go, yeah. uh, which we've had before <laughs> many times. Mm -hmm. uh, so. At one percent, so you have to look at that. You have to have make sure you have that little bit. Mm. And, and as you said, one percent is not a. Historically, what is the number that everyone feels comfortable with when you think about um, unexpected issues, fire, flood, bad winters? Um, I think it's always just close. Ask the question. I think it's always they they try to get it fairly close, you know, especially with in, in the default situation. But it's. Uh, they try to keep it really close, and as you can see, they, I could, we could ask her that. What, what you know, what have the years past been? So, Mr. LeBranch. Yeah, it, as you know, most everybody here. I realize Joyce is a little bit new to this, but um, the town manager, as he gets, as they get towards that fourth quarter in the year, and he's watching things very carefully, mm -hmm. and. As they get towards the very end, they look, they look to see what's in there for money. And then things they need, that departments need, whether it's the fire department with uh, some hose or some equipment or whatever, then they start spending it down to, on things that are, I'm not talking about things that are just crazy out the window type of stuff, neither. I'm talking about things that to make this town run properly. And they spend it and they try to get it as close as they can <coughs> without going over because you cannot over, you know, spend that budget. But so this is this reflects good town management. That's what this that number shows me. Very well done job. Point of information. Mr. Ladd, once we approve the budget and the town votes on that budget. I don't know that our relationship belongs at this point. It's up to the town to manage the available sum of money as the managers of that sum of money. And we should be preparing for the next budget. We can't really alter what already is. Can we call in a town manager and say, you can't spend any more money or over budget? I don't think so. It's, I, it's up to the government. The manager and yeah. the selectman. I, I, I'm not sure that that's what we did or are doing. We asked, and you, you remember this, I, I don't know if that was a meet, one of the meetings you missed, but we asked Christy Pullum at this table last November for a three-year average. She had no problem with that. As a matter of fact, the public wants to hear that. This stuff about, you know, we're well aware of what you said about once it's, the budget's approved. Right. But one thing we're going to do, which hasn't been done in many other years, this camera is going to be talking about positions thousands of dollars and when we're talking about a one percent hold on a second talking about a one percent return uh, as as mr. LeBranch said about government versus corporate he's absolutely right you don't want it that big 
My point is this. We are going to tackle then, when, which I asked last year for the schools, and, I, and, and they didn't take my recommendation to put those positions in warrant articles, so it was like a slap in the face. I don't think it's going to happen this year. And I asked the, uh, the selectmen when Regina was here last year, you're darn right we have the, going to talk about that because nobody talks about this anywhere else. And all of a sudden we all sit here in March and go to the polls and we vote and we say, oh, let's vote for this. It's, everybody needs everything that's asked. What I'm telling you is this is the first time we've even had this requested so that we can look as a budget committee and say, wow, this account you know, for three years has been averaging a 8% you know, increase or averaging a 9% increase. So that the public, because not everybody at home understands everything that we're trying to, and if we spell it out to them, they're going to say, and here's a good thing, as Steve would say, it, some of it may make sense to say, you know what? This three average on this line item makes sense. That's what I'm talking about, because otherwise, how are we supposed to discuss 2010-20 if we don't understand the history? Did we vote the budget that the town voted on? And weren't we within $50,000? Of the selectman's budget? 50000 Yeah. Well, no, that, I'm talking about... So what I am saying is, let's focus on the future. Well, that's we, what we are. We're we looking can't at, do anything about these things, we're no matter what they are. And we approved them all to begin with. And we can't so do I come to the village meeting. district meeting and say, well, Mr. Branch, we don't need to hear your report from four months ago because it doesn't matter? No, he may, it's appropriate for him to report uh -huh. to us, okay. who are the Board of Selectmen's equivalent, as the managers of the village district. Okay, so. But, but we wouldn't, as the budget committee, I'm trying to focus on exactly what is our priority. What is our responsibility and what, it, what is our assignment? And I don't think it's to look to the past, it's to review the. I don't, I don't think uh, um, anyone here in this chair is saying anything, but we are talking about comparisons to allow us to get great information. We're not thinking big enough. We have departments in this town. We may have to revitalize how we manage this town, how we manage the fire department, how we manage the police department, how we manage public works, how we do the rec department. Have you looked at other communities? And that's what I'm trying to say, to focus on the money where it's all going. That's what we're talking about, because we're going to be faced with these tough decisions. Everything you just said is a function of the government. The board is correct. You used the word management multiple times. Mr. Ladd, you, you also were one of the people who signed a petition to get rid of the budget committee. So, you know, I'm not going to get on that road. So, anything else? You have any? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mrs. Brown Russell. Yes, I am a proponent of the budget committee. I have been since 1975. Correct. And I have fought for the budget committee every year that it's been a, a mm -hmm. Warren article. But besides that, it is the budget's committee's duty to do the bottom line of the budget. It's mm -hmm. not up to us to get into positions. It's not up to us to get into wood chippers. It's not up to us to get into anything that's in the budget. We approve the line item budget. If you want to run and tell, if you would like to run, you know, tell people what to do with the money in the school or run with, to tell the people what to do with the money in the town, then you run for the selectmen or you run for the school board. The budget committee is solely to approve the bottom line. So if you And it's up to the committees themselves, whether they're the five-member school board or five-member budget committee, so. to approve, uh, not five-member budget committee, I'm sorry, board of selectmen, to approve new positions. And it's up to those five people, whether they put it in a line item or whether they put it in the um, a special warrant article, they have to approve what they're going to do with it. And they are not, you know, somebody else could advise them but it is their decision to make. So when the school board uh, comes before with three new positions last year, your philosophy, we're not supposed to ask any questions. You can ask all you want, right. but, but we don't have right? to put them as a single warrant point. article, Brian, and that's what you get so upset about. Yep. It was up to the five people who are on the school board we had to put those articles. You and I got to do it when we were board of selectmen, and a lot of decisions we made, and I have to say it right now, is public works, infrastructure, and roads all got put aside because we had a tragedy in the police department or we had a tragedy in the fire department or, or in the town manager's town office. So public works with infrastructure and roads, now we're paying the price of it. And we're paying a very hefty price because we need infrastructure and roads. But, you know, so it's all the decisions that the boards that you elect make. So the budget committee can only approve a bottom line. 
Thank you for the lecture. I think we're all oh. very aware of that. Any, any uh, <laughs> comment? Anybody else have any uh, thing on? Go ahead, Mr. LeBrand. Uh, well, we're still doing the selectman's report. That's correct. correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, could I ask these, the Mr. Selectman um, a question directly? Oh, you most certainly can. Go right okay. ahead. <laughs> we, while you're talking about infrastructure and stuff, I just wondered, Rusty, I see the crane working at the bridge at the causeway, yeah. putting in those pipes. They're almost done. Yes? Yes, they are. <coughs> They've had to wait until the, the bridge actually, the bridge was made. They had the, the apartments made. Mm -hmm. They were waiting for the bridge. That was delivered last Friday week. or Saturday, and I believe on Monday they set the bridge, and now they'll be setting the pipe. As soon as they get that pipe done, what they will do is they will uh, pressure test it. Mm -hmm. Once it passes pressure test, and they will start the removal of that temporary line that we put out there, and mm -hmm. that's it's just about at the yeah. end of it. I think that it's it's possible it might even be done for la uh, for Memorial Day. Possible. Knock on wood. Yeah. So, Good. but they're, they're working real hard. Mm -hmm. But uh, and we, we also had given them the the okay to work on the weekend if they had to. Good. Uh, so, because we wanted to get that done. Yeah. Uh, but the pipe is is there. I believe they set the pipe today. Mm -hmm. So now they're just gonna yeah. weld it together, and uh, and and put it together. So they look. Now you are gonna see some other construction on. Church Street over the summer because the water company is replacing mm. their water line up there. Right, right. And they will be running their water line up the east side, not the west side, mm -hmm. or north or south side. Right, right. north or right. south. North south. They're yeah. going to they're, they're so be water, the water on the opposite side of where the, where the, the sewer pipe is. Right. That is going to be a new water line. And they're going to be working on that all summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, um, they're supposed to be doing Church Street sooner than so they, they get out of there so is is minimal. Uh, disruption as possible. Good. And then once uh, they get the water line in, then they will be repaving that road. Excellent. Thank you very much. I was just surprised that uh, the querying at the approval will do work by with the DOT. Let them. That, that's just phenomenal. In the summer, I, I, I don't get that. It, we never did that stuff, and even when we had the project down the beach, we stopped in May. So watch out for your traffic. You won't get off. Oh, I'm, I'm going to stay off of Church Street also. <laughs> Church Street, you're not going to get anywhere. Thank you. <coughs> so, um, yeah, let me just comment on the, the three-year uh, budget commitment. So we, I, I want to thank Christy. I watched, I, I'd urge all of you to watch the Selectman's meetings. Um, you know, have a bowl of popcorn if you need to, but they're very informative. I, Christy did a great job last night. And the, the thing that's so important about this, going back to our focus, we need this information. This is the year it's about the money. And I don't want to hear any rhetoric about what we can and cannot do. It's about the money. People, are, taxes are going up. This, you know, houses for sale in this town are not all for the great reason either, by the way. There are people who can't afford to live here anymore that are selling. So, you know, when people tell me about how, oh, gee, the markets, I have four close friends who are millionaires. They're all realtors. I must have gone to the wrong business. And that's good in a way. But then you've got people who are selling their homes because they can't afford it, and it's sad. They've lived here 45 years. So let's not sit here and say we can't talk about the money because we are going to talk about the money, believe me. Um, school, uh, the school board report, um, I got an email from Mrs. Bridal Russell last night. I think it was she sent it at 740. I opened it up around 10 o'clock. I, I, I forwarded it to you. So, you know, my only thing on that is that's going to be on the June agenda because obviously we haven't had time to review it. Um, we need this information, and, and, and let me request this for you in a nice way, Jenny, so I don't get How accused of. Like? Let How me request like that, we get, that we get the information. Like, I find it really interesting. This has been going on for years in this committee, and everybody here allowed it. Well, not till I came back, I guess. Five weeks ago, we asked for this information. When did I get it? Last night. I mean, this is, this what? is the end of the year, Brian. Oh, There's a lot on, of Jenny. stuff going on. Oh. You have noticed that 23, 20. $3 million project we got going. Well, no, it's 26. It should have been 27, but you got free money given to you last night. <laughs> this doesn't but, sound like a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, don't, but that's what we Sorry, don't Jim. But that's what we don't want to hear. There's so much going on. There is, Brian. If you work... Oh my, okay, okay, Jenny. Yeah. So that's that. So if I go to the school board as a resident and ask for something, am I going to tell everybody's busy? Yeah, as okay. soon as we can get it to you, you will have it. But five weeks, it just happened the night before our meeting we got it? That's what I'm talking about. I right. mean, I think everybody would agree. We, well, we can't keep doing it this. Otherwise, we're going to meet July and August. we got to be able to absorb this information because we get too busy. I made a deal with all of you. We wouldn't meet in July and August. 
But if we're not going to get this information on time, we can't just go month to month to month because I can hear the conversations. Ah, oh, forget those guys. We don't need to send it to September 16th. So I appreciate you getting this information, but the more we get it on a sooner basis to be able to absorb it, the Hampton Academy construction is absolutely uh, imperative, and we all follow that. Um, yes, out of the 23284139 budget, we have $54,000. Well, I don't know what 23 million, I don't know what 23, it was 26 million. Why is it at 23 million? It was 25950. Twenty five nine fifty. Should be twenty five nine fifty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah. twenty three million versus twenty five nine is a little bit <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I will check with Mr. Lunny. Twenty six million. But whatever. It's still a million or two. What he that top figure's wrong because down at the bottom project grand total twenty five million nine hundred and fifty thousand. Well, it's projected. Yeah. Down at the yeah. bottom. Projected, oh, right? Projected, yeah. yeah. And I did hear one of your members, I watch your meetings too. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, you know. Always exciting. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a word for it. I don't know if they're exciting, but it's a good meeting. Um, I, there was a question that I have, and I'd like the information at the next meeting. How much money do you receive every year from the Hampton Academy Trustees Fund? I, we, well, we don't need, they I don't do need that They do special projects. They don't do, we don't serve. Uh, don't be so sure that I have friends who are on that trustees of that. So I'm asking you the question. How much money does the Hampton Academy receive uh, for itself yeah for yes or would you like to well, know like the, the money from the trust goes too both because you may yeah. they made a comment at your meeting last week that you didn't have to do the expensive tents anymore because with the, uh, with, the with the big auditorium yeah. um well you they said that you got quote money from that trustees which, i didn't but the, the academy <laughs> no, you, you know what i'm saying <laughs> well because why is that important this is another area where the school gets money from a trustee so this is all important information it's just like it's not hidden we just need to know because i bet it's yeah. going to be more than you think it is from mm -hmm. what i understand but anyway that would be good so if we could get and they that. do do a lot of projects that teachers suggest i do know that and they do get i don't think anybody's stuff. saying what it's good or bad i just think right. it's revenue that we need to or money that we need to know that's coming <coughs> so you in you want to know how much the commute the trust gives to hampton academy or what i'd like to know in the last three for? years especially now that they added some monies towards the uh the uh, school bond, which we're all going to be paying for for 25 years. Uh, so I think it's important to know what extra monies are coming in and does that offset another budgetary area where they don't have to fund certain areas because they're getting money from, and it may not be a lot. It may be a thousand, it may be 25,000 or whatever, but um, any idea of the approximate revenue surplus ending About June? 200,000. That's what we're saying right now? Yeah. 200, okay. Yeah. All right, two hundred thousand. And um, anybody has have any questions for Mrs. Bridal Russell? Yes. Go ahead, Mr. LeBranch. Hi, Hi Jenny. Steve. Could How you, are you? Good, good. Good. Could you give us a? I see an item here. We seem to have just skipped right over. That's Could you give us an update on the construction of the academy? The construction of the academy is it's almost done. Online. It's online yeah, it's on channel 13. They do have a special program that shows you what's what they're doing right now. They're doing the cafeteria and the outside work. Okay. It's project some of the the wings are both finished, mm -hmm. so that teachers can start to move in when they finish up on June 14th and okay. can move in after that. I wonder if you have this can answer this question for me. I don't have Comcast television, okay. so I can't see you can channel 13. You can go on the web. The internet. That's what I wanted and to you ask. You can go on the internet. Greg just did it. I think you can get a link from sau90.org. Thank you very much. Yes, because Greg made that available for oh people who didn't have Comcast <laughs> and didn't have that. Thank you very much. You know, this Can't came plan up. on him for Stockholm. I got my Comcast. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so I still get Comcast internet, Brian. Okay, just so well, that you know. Well, you Comcast internet, but you can also get the Channel 13. Uh, I, but I don't have TV. I'm, I'm right. like Rusty. I have a digital antenna or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, so, and so in any case, um, so the thing is that it's interesting because at the village district meeting last month, we had SAU 21 superintendent, the new superintendent yep. come in and talk to us. And, and somebody asked, I think it might have been Bob that asked about the being able to watch the Winnicott uh, school board meetings because it's not on channel 22. And I, 
I don't know if it's on channel 13. No. Probably not. No, because no it's it not. should be on channel 22. They came into your meeting. What's SAU 21 no. going to do it? Oh, they were invited because there's no, a. No, no, I thought they. We, we were told we got to watch what we talk about. I don't know what SAU 21 has to do with the beach. Oh, no, at as the, a matter at of fact, <coughs> people from the beach go to SAU 21. <laughs> it is our high school. Oh, oh, so I think it's oh. appropriate to present the superintendent. Your high school. Oh, we live stream that because of so many people, school. living <laughs> teachers and stuff, living outside of town and wanted to get, a, get yeah. in there and oh. see that. Well, see, that was the thing was they're, they're redoing their web page and they don't have that link. But SAU 90 does, which yeah. I would, of course, expect because we only have the very best exactly. at SAU 90. Uh, uh, Greg works and very I, hard. I know they do. And I always go to S the, uh, the website to read. Shock news, of course. Yes. You know, to watch That's the shock news. Yeah. But I'll be able to. You watch. running for school board next year? Or? <laughs> I didn't know. I just no, no, no. But I'm just saying, you know, okay, thank you. I wondered how I could watch 13. Now if you, you haven't now seen shock news, it really is worth watching. Very good. Oh, do a great I, love job. It. I love it. Thank you very much, Jenny. Okay. Mr. LeBranch, thank you. Any other questions of Mrs. Brother Russell? <clears throat> no. All right. So we're on to the Hampton Village District Report. Mr. LeBranch. Oh, no. Oh, Mr. Ladd. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mr. Ladd. You Because I see Stephen at the table, was so I don't know who is the commissioner who is it. No, he is. <laughs> oh, you are. Okay, go ahead. The Village District obviously is, at that time of the year, where planning is in full swing. Yeah. Um, we have quite a bit of advanced planning. The Country Week has been expanded dramatically. That's the weekend, the week following the 4th of July. We hope to have two nationally known country singers if you're into country music. We have also are in the process of negotiating with the Boston Circus Guild for a circus performance Labor Day weekend on the Saturday night of Labor Day weekend and with the Sunday night as a rain date. And it should be quite a spectacular event uh, with one caveat, there will be no live animals as part of this circus event. We have now pretty much annualized the annual fire show, which is the Saturday following seafood weekend. And we're hoping, particularly with the circus, to address the issues that the Legionnaire's disease problem created last year in terms of branding and image. Whenever your brand takes a hit, you gotta do something to bring it back. And these are partially our attempts to do that. We are also, have representation at the Chamber of Commerce office in the form of Commissioner Buckley to answer questions concerning the entertainment which we provide. That seems to be going pretty seamlessly at this point. And that's about it. Any questions of the, of the Village District report? I just had one. I saw Mr. Grady last night uh, come before, and it's hard to believe 19 years ago. We, and we, I worked very closely with those guys for years at the beach. Mike, the, the question I have, though, I heard a comment by him saying, can we have public works if we need help with water? Where's the state? We always, when I ran state parks, see, this is the thing. I did more for Hampton than they're doing now. That was the reason the state probably didn't want me around, because, because I cared more about Hampton. Why, where's the state with the water? They got 12,000 faucets in that new thing. Why can't, why, why should we be worried about the water? We've always run a hose line from the state faucet. Right, yeah. yeah. And I am sure we'll do that again this well, then year. That's why, Greg, I don't know why I asked the question then, because why would he need public works if you get the state? No, one? I don't know. Well, public works bring a fire pump truck with the water. I, I think what he asked for public works was talking about some of the snow fence and stuff. Yes. No, he asked snow fence, but he, if you watch the replay, he yeah. said, in case we need extra water, I watched the whole meeting, then you can call yeah, public right. works. But state, that's another thing. You guys got to push the state because we did, they did a lot more when we were down there, and Stephen remembers those nights too. Well, we have a very functional working relationship with the State Parks right. Department were content right now. I'm glad. Well, I don't know if it's content, but it's functional. No, it is for us. Well, and we are the ones who make yeah. that judgment. Yeah. Okay. Bob, Bob, did you want to mention the, the meeting tomorrow night with the state? Yeah, the state, state will have a meeting tomorrow night from five to six thirty to just go over problems that may have occurred over the winter, ideas they have for the coming season. It'll be on the second floor at the Shell in their function meeting room. And anyone is invited to attend and express their concerns, ideas, or criticisms yeah. about what is going on. I asked uh, at least one selectman, and I never got a response. 
Um, why is it that state parks have their meetings when the majority of people work? Yeah. And, and secondly is, can I make a request to the Board of Selectmen when you're announcing dates? I mean, you should have listened to it last night. Selectman Waddell, oh, the meeting's 5 to 8. Selectman Brighto, it's 5 to 6.30. This one's on the 23rd. This one's on the 22nd. Selectman Barnes. They, everything is rushed, and, and you're trying to communicate to the public. So I have requested, I don't know if I have to go through 10, 10 layers or just call the state parks themselves. There's a lot of people who give input, but 5 to 6.30 on a Wednesday night is really not conducive to the working public. So it takes care of all the people who hang out there by the shell and drink free coffee and go to the meeting and go home. That's the problem. And that's well, I suggest if you have Oh, here we go. You're going to tell me to go talk to somebody else. If okay. you have that degree of passion, come tomorrow night and express it to them. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. People can't make it like myself, right. 5 to well, 630. And so well, you, you said you have a great relationship with the yeah. state. Why don't, can I ask you as the Beach yeah. Peace Increment, what do we call them, Village District or whatever? Take it, John, you'll get it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we used to call it precinct, never had any problems. It's okay. No, so, no, Jones had a great deal of trouble with precinct. Well, that's Tim Jones. But, so my point is, can I ask you to ask <laughs> Meredith, to ask Mike, to ask Phil, to ask... Maybe we have to go to the governor, but if you could get an answer, that would be great. Well, if I can, I'll share it And with please, you. can you send it in writing? I don't know, because I don't run into you. But we Chairman, yes. are the um, meetings that you're talking about listed on the, webs uh, on the website, the town website? It was, it was in the town it, website. If website. people want to attend, they yes. can find it. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, but I mean, I'm saying that the feedback I get, it's like, it's like some of these, uh, what do you call it, the planning review committee? Well, they meet at like 11 in the morning. 12, what is this? Are we turning it into a retirees thing that only people can make it that don't work? I mean, I'm serious. we got a lot of stuff going on in this town, and people want to go to meetings. Anyway, uh, Mr. LeBranch is going to talk about chat. Yes. The Coastal Hazards Adaptation Team. We met this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Three to, 3 to 5, we spent two hours. And on our agenda this month, we have a very... Um, really well spent two hours, a lot of information. We reviewed um, the uh, flood categories. Uh, we're still in the, it's sort of in the, uh, this is our fifth meeting and work session, we're still gathering information. A lot of information being gathered at this time. Uh, flood maps uh, that we're working on, adding all kinds of information. And I will say that it's, uh, it's progressing very nicely. Last month, I gave each of you yes, a, a, a report of where we were at that point, and then I asked if there were any questions. And the um, the one question that I I brought the questions the question to the, uh, the to that committee this afternoon, and David uh, Moyer, who's not here this time, asked about the um, you know we're doing this as Hampton. And why are we not working together with some other communities? He mentioned Seabrook. Well, actually, there is a um, another acronym. Uh, there's a Seabrook, uh, Hampton, and it includes Hampton Falls Alliance. And that's there was a grant for this, but the uh, this the the grant was specific, and chat is an outgrowth that can be adopted in the other communities. Mm -hmm. This chat is sort of the test. This is the first one. And uh, one of the other comments was that um, Seabrook has been relatively silent. Mm -hmm. And by silent, there's staffing reasons and you know things like that. It's not that they're not talking. It's just that they just don't have anybody uh, doing this right now. Regional planning is something good I'm just reading exactly what was told to me this afternoon. But site-specific uh, for local is the best. So that's the answer to uh, David Moya's question last month. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Under um, new business, I received a, a call from Mr. Welch, um, our town manager, I don't know, a month or so ago, asking, he called it the Capital Expenditures Committee. And of course, those of us who started the Capital Improvement Program Committee, it's, it, so right. same thing. So I think they met, they've had a big schedule. They've met like once in two years. <laughs> but he needs a representative and an alternate from this committee, voted tonight, 
So I would accept a motion. And by the way, capital improvements program is, is when it was working, we would plug in a major project every right. year on a six-year plan with the cost spelled out. Um, I can remember going to town hall and looking for the spreadsheets that Carol pays on, and I had nobody said, "Oh, nobody, those don't exist anymore." So here we go. You know, it's yeah. like they don't keep history or something. But it's a very important committee. I don't know Tracy Emmerich's the chairman. They haven't met, but they still need members so that in case they do meet. Got a lot of stuff going to be happening. As Mr. Henderson, Mr. Pluff said earlier, all these projects are going to be coming up in years to come. So I'll accept a motion to anybody who wants to be on the uh, representative from the Budget Committee. Mr. Chair, I just want to point out that Brian, <clears throat> up until last year, Brian, Brian Lapham, Lapham I know he was. was the representative yeah. to that right. for yeah. many, many years. He, so, he was. Yeah. did a right. great job. Yeah. Well, I would move the chair represent uh, the Budget Committee. Uh, well, let's see if anybody else is interested. <laughs> would Mr. Henderson be interested Mr. in that? Mr. Henderson's interested. It'd be interesting. Okay, the capital improve uh, capital improvements committee. Uh, Mr. Pluff moves. Mr. Henderson, who seconded it? You, Mr. LeBranch. I'll second that. Yep. Uh, any other uh, nominees? All those in favor. There we go. Uh, right. Unanimous. Now we need an alternate to the um, capital improvements committee. Joyce, perhaps you might consider jumping in. I think I have enough on my plate with this committee. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And it's well, not you got, you got two out the next three months. Off. <laughs> about Mr. Ladd, would you be interested? No, I'm committing out at this point. Okay. Mr. Poof, we need an alternate. Uh, I'll be the alternate. Good. Mr. Pluff is moved. I'll, I'll move it. Mr. Mr. LeBranch, uh, Mr. Henderson seconds it for Mr. Pluff to be the alternate. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, this next one, and, I, and I'm proud to say, uh, I actually in. You know, kind of put this forward, and I had spoken with Selectman Woolsey about it because Jason Bashan did come before us last year, um, and you know, obviously the master plan didn't pass. And I think with more information and getting involved, I think it's a great idea, and he did too, to have a budget committee representative with the zoning, the planning. It's already Selectman's rep, Mr. Waddell, is going to be um, a few other boards in town. So they're starting these workshops. The first one, it's going to be their second Wednesday of their planning board monthly meeting. So June 19th would be the first meeting, and I don't know how many meetings uh, they propose, but I do believe they want to get something in place in case they needed to come back to us in the October, November time frame for any sort of discussion of, um, you know, and I guess the very first meeting is going to be a presentation by the RP, Barbara might know, the, the RPC, I believe, or somebody I thought was coming. Jason said it last night, and I, I, I can't remember exactly. Somebody's giving a presentation about master plans, much like we used to get. Oh, yes, he talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, he's asking, we don't need an alternate to this. We need one representative to what, that committee. Do you know what time their meeting is, Brian? Seven. Well, it's 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. Uh, it's his second Wednesday. Um, and they're definitely going to be the second Wednesdays, and I would assume it's going to be June, July, August, September, and October yeah. right now. It could go um, so... I might be interested in that if, if there's yeah. nobody else. That, uh, that's the village district, the second Wednesday of every I know, but if that's why I asked the time. If it's 7 o'clock, then it would have it would got... But I'd here's the problem, and I'm not trying to pick on you, but you missed two or three meetings because you couldn't make it for 7 o'clock here. And, I, you know, I just want to be fair. I, and I, you know what, Brian? I'm just... You know what? You're absolutely right. Is there somebody else that would, would consider doing this? Because, because this, doing this budget committee, but... I have to tell you, I spend a lot of work on the village the district. I know you do. As yeah. the village district, right. and I, I wish they had picked a different. If well, they did it on a normal planning board night, which I think is good in a way. It gives yeah. people they, they they'll still tune into right. that. Yeah, it's okay. That's you're absolutely right. I, I'm just thinking of you, much. Stephen. You know, that's be, I won't be able. To, I'll I'll end up getting because your input would meetings. be valuable, and if you missed a couple of meetings, you know, it'd it's be, not going to be good. So if somebody else would like that, please. I would suggest, please. could you reach out to David Muir? He seems to have acquired interest in... Oh, well, David's not come back two weeks, and I promise, Jason, David's not here. We need to make a decision tonight, and I'm not going to... But in, in fairness to Jason... In fairness to you know everybody here, if everybody's got something going on right now, and David's our top guy... Well, you haven't asked me if I'm interested. Well, are you interested? Right? I might be. Oh, okay. there you go. Well, right. If you're interested, well, then I'd say the chairman. Yeah. Yeah, I'll 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 second. I think it would be a good move to have me in, in yeah, the issue since I was vocal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, we have a, so a, I would accept. A motion and a second. 
Yes. I'll move. Yeah. Mr. Ladd, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Yeah. All those in favor? There you go. Uh, yeah. Now abstain. That's, thank you. Thank you, Brian. That's better, thank you. That's a better yeah. uh, choice. Thank you. Well, you would have been a great choice, too. But I just feel for you and getting no, off no, the beach in the summer. Right. Right. You're absolutely right. Um, already. So a couple more things. Um, we will be meeting on June 18th. As promised, we will not be meeting July and August, which is tradition. And just so you know, for the record, there have been several years, mostly 85% of the time, we have met in June. So this is not an additional meeting. We will be discussing the school stuff that we got and what Mr. Brido handed out to us tonight. Uh, and then we recess in July and August. And um, I have in the audience tonight, Mrs. Woolsey has shown up tonight. She'd like to give a small presentation to us before we, uh, I do want to mention meeting with school administration has been common on the, on the uh, September meeting. If we could ask that Superintendent uh, Murphy and and the business administrator, uh, Mr. Lunny, come in and give us kind of an update on where they're going. Mr. Chairman, yes. before Selectman Lindsay speaks, Go ahead. could I ask for a sense of the room about meeting in June? No. Okay. No. And I'll tell you why. You know, we are, we are a board that got elected. But we don't. I we, don't need a lecture. You oh, said no. Well, I've already got three of them tonight, so go ahead. Uh, no, I'm not All interested right. in your lecture. Okay. I don't know why you asked the question. <laughs> I think the question was reasonable. I think your response. That's what you have a chairman for. That's what's been missing. You have a chairman that makes decisions, and this is a board that's supposed to be doing work all the time. So we're not just going to skip three months. But there's a lot more to do. With $28 million, there's certainly enough to do to, to not have meetings. Anyway. Well, um, this to the tone of this group should quiet down. What do you mean the it, tone? What's the, the tone? The tone, the... Um, Let's just say collegiality, compromise, I, conciliation are the way to get ahead. These meetings, which get into confrontations on personnel. What are we doing on confrontations? I don't understand what you're saying. Uh, well, why don't you look at the tape of tonight's meeting yeah. and say, in what way could I lead this group in a way that it would be most effective for the group? and see if what you're doing. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Lamb. I have been a member, and, and I'm going to give it right back to you. Mm -hmm. I have been a chairman of this board in this town 30 years on various committees, most more committees than anybody in this room has been on. Mm -hmm. You elected to be chairman. If you don't like my to tone, then take a vote to get rid of me as chairman. Well, I don't want to get rid of you. Then don't tell me how I'm supposed to talk. I'm a very confident person. My wife and kids will tell you that. People who have served with me tell you. And you know what? That's going to end that discussion. This is what the problem has been. The minute somebody raises their voice or disagrees with somebody, I'm not a child. And you keep bringing this up. You did it to Tim last year. It's If I sat here, and I, I applauded the Village District, and he'll tell you, I, I applauded you guys. It's okay if I applaud the Village District. What a great job you do. But the minute I bring up something you don't like, you turn it into a tone. So enough of it. No, no, not enough of it. Well, you're you're t treating us like we're children. I don't know. I don't you're know what that means. You're giving us we're going to work. You know, you're going to do all this homework. Well, we are going to work. We I had the inference is we hadn't worked, and you're going to now change that. I I think that there could have been more work through the years. Yeah, well, I do. That's why the budgets are where we are now. We, you voted along with us on that budget last we year. Have, we oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. I voted against it. We had to have a majority to recommend it, not recommend it. I didn't vote for it. Well, the majority recommended it, and you were a okay. member of that. So anyway, group. would you pass this information uh, around? How many copies do you have? Well, Brian, just do, oh, go ahead, Mary Louise. Just do the first one uh, that has the uh, date in the upper left-hand corner. Oh, I'm sorry. Because we're going to do it in three sections. Okay. If you'd be so kind, there should be eight copies of there because you need one for Barbara. For the viewers at home, it's Selectman Woolsey, who is, you, has a long track record in history of this town, uh, does a great job. For you, Do you need another one? You got the one, Steve, that has the. We didn't have extra copies. Okay, there should have been eight copies there. You're good. I just got this. Yes, in the top. Okay. She has one. Yeah. So who didn't get one? It's okay. Uh, All right. We yeah. are sharing. Yeah. Unless there's an extra. There was I don't have one. That's okay. We're, we're very one, comfortable two, sharing three, four, this. Five, six, seven, Barbara eight. needs one. Oh, I gave one to Barbara. Yeah, that's yeah she's supposed to have one. That's because there are seven of you. And no, there are eight. There's actually no, nine one, of us normally. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So you will find uh -oh. out where this is going. Sorry about that. It's okay. Well, well, no David's worries. Not here, so go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Mrs. Absolutely Woolsey. Absolutely no worries. Oh my goodness. Go ahead, Mrs. Um, Woolsey. Thank you. First thing I will say to you is it's it's a really exciting to see a, a dedicated, hardworking budget committee. And uh, there's another side benefit because most of you uh, really project very nicely. So people aren't going to be sitting home saying, gee whiz, we can't hear them. Um, I spoke briefly to my board a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I want to follow through on my comments at that point in time. My focus is the money. We've got to focus in this community on the money and how the money impacts the taxpayers. Uh, in 2014, that board of selectmen got together and decided to take the former chief of police and give him a position as an assistant manager. The Were vote was unanimous. Board, sir? Go ahead. What does this have to do with the budget committee? It has find to out do with money, money and the budget ahead, committee. The, um, that board uh, appointed uh, the assistant manager because he had retired from the police department. He was the former police chief. But if you'll notice uh, up here on the upper left-hand corner, I've put down the dates, uh, and this, this first employment agreement is uh, related to the town manager, Mr. Welch. Mr. Welch was hired in March 2007, and traditionally town manager contracts are three years at a time. His first uh, service as manager went from 2007 to 2010, then that was renewed 2010 to 2013, 2013 to 2016, and uh, should have been 2016 to 2019. But in 2017, there was a little glitch, and the um, Board of Selectmen drew up an employment agreement with Mr. Welch. And you can see uh, it says November 27, 2017. These are online, but I doubted very much that many of you would want to go in and go searching for it and, and uh, review it. What the gist of this agreement is that uh, the existing manager would transition into the position of a part-time deputy town manager beginning on uh, uh, June, well, for, uh, beginning on, on the date of the, app the appointment, but uh, keeping him in power as the manager till June 30th, 2020. So that was a little bit out of the three-year uh, reach. Um, he then would automatically transition to a <coughs> the deputy manager position until June 30th. So he'd have one extra year to serve as the um, a deputy manager. Uh, at that point in time, Mr. Welch was making uh, roughly 116,000 a year. If you, and you'll have a chance to read the whole thing at home. I'm just gonna give you a couple of highlights. Uh, and the next page, number six, severance, it says that the uh, manager shall be entitled to severance benefits. So when he was, t he's taken out of his seat as the town manager and ends up as a deputy, uh, he's going to get a lump sum payment of one month's gross salary for each full year of service. So that would end up as a year uh, of uh, getting the money uh, to, he would get 12 months worth, he'd get a year's pay at that point in time. Uh, this is nothing that the manager uh, asked for. This was a decision of the Board of Selectmen. Now let's backtrack a little bit because I go way back in this community. The 
We have never had a deputy manager or an assistant manager in the history of the town. Uh, with a town our size, uh, I don't know that any other town in the state of New Hampshire has two managers uh, serving the public. The cost right now, if you pair up uh, current salary for Mr. Welch, plus the salary for the assistant manager or deputy manager, we're spending just under $200,000 a year on those two positions in the manager's office. I personally think that's outrageous. I also think that to take a qualified sitting manager and replace him with someone uh, certainly less qualified is a problem. But look at the second page, the second uh, segment that I gave you, Brian. And this says employment agreement. This is two agreements. This Hold is on a the second. agreement. Let me pass these out to yeah. oh. <coughs> this is the agreement with um, the deputy manager Sullivan and his also his contract, what the contract would be when he transitioned to the manager. Um, this agreement was done, once again, November 29th, by the sitting selectman. And it says that uh, the terms and agreements of the parties to immediately appoint the employee, that being Mr. <laughs> Sullivan, as town manager upon the earlier of town manager Fred Welch resigning or terminating his position as town manager or on July 1st, <coughs> 2020. Um, it sh and I have highlighted some of the relevant sections, and you can have uh, you can read this in your own time uh, once you uh, get out of here. But the um, deputy town manager uh, under term under two term and employment, the deputy town manager agrees to remain in the employment of the town of Hampton as deputy town manager or town manager until June 30, 22. So now we're really extending this out. Uh, into the future. Um, uh, on the next page, it says, as, outline, as outlined in Part A of this agreement, until town manager Fred Welch vacates his position by voluntary resignation or termination, at which time the deputy town manager <coughs> shall immediately be appointed to the position of town manager as provided in Section B of this agreement. Again, if, point of order. This is the, if this the, is again point of order, sir. We're Go paying ahead. money. This is uh, this. a selectman's money. thing. This has nothing to do with the budget committee. Yes, it does. This is about employees and employment, and it has nothing to do with this budget committee. So at this point in time, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Well, first of all, the, you do not make a motion to adjourn. The chair makes the adjourn. And secondly, as I said to you, we have not gotten to the point of why this is being brought up. You've got to think of the 2020 budgets. And that's what we're talking about, what's going to happen in June 2020. We're not so sure there'll be a deputy manager here in 2020. So we've got to talk about these thousands of dollars that we may be asked to look at as part of a 2020 budget. It's absolutely important. Go ahead, Mr. Wait, can I make a point? Wait, wait. Can I make a point of order, Mr. Chair? Point of order. As long as it's on what I just said. I'm just a little concerned. We're uh, not... Uh, this is a personnel... Is this no, a personnel? it is not. This is public knowledge. We're not taking anything that's not on the website. Whatever she, <coughs> anything Mrs. Woolsey is on the website. This is not a personnel. Okay, this is not a person. This is, no, it isn't. This is a contract. Just um, employment no, contract. I'm just asking. Yes, yeah. but, two people. but it's online. Wait, it's public wait, knowledge, Jenny. So okay. It's, Go ahead. Smile at me. Just Go ahead, ahead, Jenny. Wait a minute. So, hold, hold on. on. Hold on. Yeah, you sure. know this as well as I do, okay? Uh, Mrs. Bridal, uh, Budget committee. Mrs. Bridal, excuse me, would you, uh, I noticed on the school board you have all the respect. Can you come through the chair if you want to ask a question? I thought you No, you didn't. just me. No, I did not. Yet. So I'm do you sorry. have a question for Mrs. Wilson? Yes, I do. Go ahead, but let her continue. Yes. In our experience, as you and I both served on the budget committee, yes. and you and I both served on the board of selectmen. As well as yes. me. As well as yes. you, but I'm not talking, asking you a question right now. You no asked kidding. me to ask Mrs. Wolsey the question. Um, would you say that the budget committee's function is to approve a bottom line budget? Yes. Okay. Is the selectmen's um, 
prerogative or duty to do a line by line budget? I'm, I'm, what I'm talking is is, with, the, uh, is the board of selectmen's job to to fill in that line item budget. Well, the budget com the board of selectmen gets the budget from the budget committee, right? And, and then, then they and then we adapt. What we're talking about here is money, money, money. Uh, spending two hundred thousand dollars for two positions in the town manager's office. A, a secondary position, which was never advertised, which was never put out for competition. I'm talking about money here, well, and I'm really concerned. Smile at me. I didn't, think, I didn't think that you oh. could. I didn't think, Mrs. Wilson, can you bind another board to a contract for three years? I didn't think you could. Well, they are binding I, up to I'm 20. asking you that question, Mary. Jenny, your board's doing that. it now, so you just yeah. sent. let her finish, please. This is, this is binding future boards right. of selectmen up to 2022, That's right. yeah, when the standard contract for a town manager is three years, which is why I put those little dates up in the upper left-hand corner so you can see what the normal progression would be. And I'm talking money here. Now, first of these, uh, of this segment that I gave you shows the deputy manager's uh, conditions to be employed until a town manager is kicked out on June 30th next year. And then, you, if you look inside and start with Part B, Employment Agreement Town Manager, the above-named employee shall immediately be appointed to the office of town manager. The common practice in a town the size of Hampton is to put out a request for candidates. If you want to dump the manager, you put out a request for qualified candidates, and you hold interviews. I am offended by what has taken place here because this is not the norm. And you have now, if you look in here, and this is the scary part, you have recitals, you have general, and it says, the above named employee shall immediately be appointed to the office of town manager upon Fred Welch vacating his position as town manager by resignation or termination, but not later than July 1, 2020. So the, the current manager is being shown the door without any procedure to replace him as the manager. This is our money, our money. Then down on number two, the manager it, which would be Sullivan now, agrees to remain in the exclusive employment of the town of Hampton until June 30, 2022, provided that the town of Hampton Board of Selectmen may renew the contract in its discretion. Since when do you tie up the town of Hampton town manager position in this fashion? And then it gets to the scary part. Severance on number six, go to the next page, way down at the bottom. Should the Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen desire to terminate this contract for any reason other than those delineated, or the Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen and the manager and stuff, severance benefits, which shall consist of a lump sum payment of 12 months gross salary. You know what the 12 months gross salary is? It's $87,000. And if we want to get rid of Mr. Sullivan as the manager, we would have to sit down and cough up $87,000. This contract is, scares me as a resident of this town. It scares me as a taxpayer. And the, the last page I have for you here uh, that that Brian can pass around is an article that Max Sullivan wrote after watching one of our meetings. And uh, it says, select men reject proposal to oust deputy town manager. This was April 19th this year. And you have uh, uh, Selectman rejected board member Mary Louise Again, Woolsey's board proposal. Board. What does this have to do with the I am finishing up finish. to uh, 
Yeah, Mary Louise Woolsey's proposal this week to nix Jamie Sullivan's contract, making him the future town manager. One selectman called the move destructive. The uh, selectman Barnes said, it's just going to start a war for no reason. Whether it's wrong or right, it's not what to do next. Whatever she's thinking is coming from her. Barnes said she had confidence in Sullivan as a future town manager, saying his background as the town's police chief gives him credibility as a Hampton guy who cares about the town. I have seen ridiculous and idiotic comments in my time in this community, but that takes the cake. I want to refer you, have all of you picked up your 2018 town report? Oh, yes. Yes. All right, because the first place I go in this is wages, and I want to just give you a comparison. Um, you, we have a nice uh, town clerk, Shirley Doheny, who has worked for the town for quite a while, and she, let me find her really quick, here she is, she earned in 2018 $66,133. She's responsible for the money, for every penny of money who comes in, what comes into that town office. She has staff that she has to supervise. If you think she's doing a 32-hour work week, forget it. $66,000, and you've got a, a fake deputy manager position in the town office making $87,000 a year for 32 hours a week. Where is the common sense? Hold on a second. Uh, Hold on a second. We're getting libelous here, aren't we? No, no, no yes. you I, I can holler as loud as you can, Jenny. I'm not and I'm then worried you're, about that. It's what you're saying here. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not comfortable sitting here and, ha and being part of it, Brian. I'm well, I'm okay, sorry, but you see I'll make a motion agreed. to adjourn. Hold on. Hold on, hold on a second. Agreed. We've you got... Hold on, yeah. Mary, I'm going to put you off a second because we do have two new business items. One, I want to ask the selectman's representative, uh, the outside council uh, budget is 113% as of April. And yeah. I would like to ask for a copy for all members of all outside litigation which has been issued to this committee in the past. Yep. So Chairman Latimer, so there should be no discussion. I want to get that in the next two weeks and it's going to be very important. And then I also want to see, because this is another reason this town report is important, I also want to find out what mechanism we need to do to get everybody that we pay in this community listed even outside police offices in other communities. Mm -hmm. If you go to other towns, everybody that the town pays is listed in the town report. Yep. I want that done. And one more thing, I want to make sure that we get a copy, in-depth copy, by hourly wage of every outside law enforcement official that we have paid in this community for two years, the last two years. Just do me a favor, where you've made the specifics, send it to me in writing and I'll make sure I get that. Okay, so when can we get that information? I'd like I, to get it in the next two weeks. Yes. Um, I'll soon, I will pass it, pass it along. If okay. I can make a final comment. And then just let me make oh. my final new business so we can move. Okay. Um, Rockingham Planning Commission is having their annual dinner. It's a great group of people. I was on it for years. Uh, Barbara Kravitz, our own Secretary Administrative Assistant, yeah. is the Chairman of the Rockingham and Planning Commission. It's uh, along with um, Ann Carnaby and Mark Olson from the Planning mm -hmm. Board. It's $35, but you're going to have an excellent speaker in Supreme Court Justice John Broderick. Uh, you can call 603-778-0885. It's Wednesday, June 12th. And I told Barbara, I announced it. Okay, Mary Louise, you finish up. Again, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Just finally. No, the rules were made. No, no, time out here. The rules were made last year. We discussed them at the first mm -hmm. meeting this year. The chairman adjourns the meeting. Mm -hmm. That is the way rules are set in the same in the state. Go ahead, Mary. Then I would like to. Point, point, point of order. Point of order, please. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order, Mary Louise. I, I would like to call to the attention. Point of order, please. Well, go ahead. Thank Make you. Your point of order. I would like it put in the meetings that a, a, a motion to adjourn was duly requested and seconded and been denied. Thank well, it's been denied because it's not the rules that we had That's lost. Go ahead, Mary Louise. All right. The, the concern that I have here, and it all centers I'm around. I'm sorry. I don't feel that's what it, yep. it all, it all yep. centers around money. Yes, it's this is public. Jenny, Jenny, I didn't either that night that Frank went out of control in my own family. I'm leaving, Brian. This is, this is public money that we're talking about. And if you have to be a homeboy 
a homeboy to get a, a, a position in this town, in fact, to turn into the town manager, that, you know, the, uh, the town clerk is, is a home girl. I don't see anybody looking for her. So I, I have a big we problem. We have a meeting. Uh, Thank you, me, gentlemen. gentlemen. So when's our next meeting? June 18th. June 18th. Okay. Yes. There we go. Mrs. Woolsey, thank yes. you. Uh, thank Mr. You. Henderson. Yeah, Brian, big, I just uh, want to make something clear, okay? And um, we all know, you know, what our what our purpose is here. Absolutely. Know? Our purpose here is budget. Yep. Um, in the future, I hope that we can get a little more, you know, straight down to the budget. Like, if we're going to have guest speakers, and I have that utmost respect for Mayor of the Week, that we come in and we have something that deals with a budget, a number, and things like that. Well, this did have to do with um, the budget, though, because we're talking about 2020. That's what we're I understand about. that. And uh, as far as Joyce, I just want to say thank you for being, you know, partaking in this. I know it's a lot to learn. You. I know you're a very intelligent right. person. I know you know numbers, and you're very sharp. And, uh, you know, we appreciate you stepping up to the plate and being a member of this. It's you know, a little rocky, but thank you. it's going to be good. Oh, um, and can I just make yeah. one comment? Go ahead. Um, and I do appreciate the number of years in your service as selectmen um, in the town. And I do want to go on record that I am very uncomfortable with um, the presentation of someone being fake in a role. Um, I think that there are a lot of ways to present and um, to present a position. And I would hope that going forward, that this board and other boards can be sensitive to the environment that we're in, in this country and in our town, and being respectful for everyone that tries to do a very good job. And so I just ask that we just temper our comments and temper our tone, um, because I think that all of us really want to do a good job for the taxpayers and for the state and for the town that we live in. And I just want to go on record that um, I think that side comments and um, historical wounds do not have a place going forward in the future. Welcome to the town of Hampton, but I will tell you this. And I'd like to change that, Chairman. Well, I understand that, but you have to remember that this board is no different. Well, yeah, we are different in a way, but this lady in front of us tonight has been stifled and been treated terribly by her own board. So when you sit here and say be respectful, that goes both ways. And the only thing I'm going to say to you is, and I would say to you off camera or even now, and, and I consider you a colleague, and anybody that knows me, I'm fair. But I have no idea what you're talking about when you say the tone. If people don't like my confident voice, then remove me as chairman, because that's not going to change. People are sick and tired of this town and these budgets, and they're sick and tired of costs. The trouble is, we hear too much of this, oh, everybody hold hands and kumbaya. You come to the wrong place for that. It ain't going to happen here. Go ahead. But when you reach a point, in, in your um, governmental yep. uh, daily management, when you are using public money to hire friends, That's right. to hire friends with no background, no search, no applications, not, nothing like that, I am offended, I am telling you. And I, I will say this anywhere, I will say this in public. We cannot operate like that. There's got to be competition for any position, any position in this town. Town clerk stands for the uh, judgment of the public when she runs for re-election. But this, this creating a position to make a friend have a job and to pay public money $200,000 to fund the town manager's office is outrageous. And the only thing I'll end with is just so that you know, uh, Ms. Caprez, it is important when 72% of our budget is personnel related. Yeah. It's thousands and millions of dollars. And you know what? Yeah. It's been stifled. Nobody is allowed to talk about it at her board. They don't want to hear the facts. They just want to have the good old boy network watch their meetings. So at this meeting, if we're going to worry about, and, and let me tell you, I've lived in this town 38 years. I ain't going to sit here and worry about if somebody likes me or not. I'm here to mm -hmm. do a job. And my tone, I've known these two gentlemen. I've served with Mrs. Woolsey and Mr. Pluff 28 years ago. I've mm -hmm. known Mr. Mrs. Kravitz. I know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I'm a regular guy, but I'm also a passionate guy. Yeah. 
yeah. and I'm going to stand up for what I believe in, yeah. and I'm going to stand up for what I say is right. And if somebody doesn't like the tone, I can't change that. I, and I, I don't know what that means. This is what we heard last year from the schools. Oh, the tone, because they didn't like to hear the message. It wasn't the tone. Right. You can say loud things and say, oh, the school does a great job. But if you say, if your voice is loud, you say, no, this wasn't done right, then they turn it on yeah. the, the, the tides on you. And yeah. so, you know, that's... I would have much preferred to have seen this on the agenda and had the information in front of me prior to having it online and presented it's, to me this in this manner. And I just want to yeah, go much on like, for saying that. Yeah. yeah, much like the input from the selectmen and school board tonight that we didn't get till tonight. Yeah. See, I would have liked to have seen it too. And that's yeah. happened. And I agree with you, but it happened. So this has played out on the selectmen in public. Oh yeah. This is not this is all this public is, knowledge what Mrs. Woolsey. Go ahead. No, I think at, at oh, this point, I, I believe we should uh, make a motion to adjourn, and unless you know there's something well, remember, else Well, remember, it's not the committee's motion. Okay. If we are all set, I'm ready to adjourn the meeting at 8:40. See you on June 18th. <sighs>